And ladies and gentlemen, once again, we proudly and gladly announce that over the next two days, we will have insightful discussion, thought-provoking keynote speeches, and of course, hopefully, collaborations, which will be delivered through the ISF 2024. And next, ladies and gentlemen, we are now pleased to welcome the Honorable Dato Sri Haji Fadila bin Haji Yusuf, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Energy Transition and Water Transformation of Malaysia, to deliver the keynote speech on advancing low carbon energy sources. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera and very good morning to all. This Excellency, Bapak Luhut, Binsa Panjatian, Auditing Minister for Marine, Maritime Affairs and Investment Republic of Indonesia, His Excellency, Mr. Teo Chi Hien, Senior Minister and Coordinating Minister for National Security Republic of Singapore, His Excellency, Dr. Tan Si Ling, Minister of Manpower and Second Minister for Trade and Industry Republic of Singapore, his Excellencies, Ministers, Ambassadors, Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen. Firstly, on behalf of the Government of Malaysia, we would like to express our humble appreciation to the Government of Indonesia for inviting us to this important International Sustainable Forum, or ISF, on advancing low carbon energy sources. The discussion and organization of the ISF is indeed timely as countries within the Southeast Asia region, including Malaysia and Indonesia, is pivoting towards a net zero and low carbon future. I trust the sharing of thoughts and our respective experiences in the development and implementation of low carbon energy solutions will enable us to gain invaluable insight in accelerating our country's energy transition efforts while exploring areas of mutual cooperation and collaboration with other ASEAN member states. Ladies and gentlemen, climate change is an undeniable reality that transcends borders where its impacts are felt across our region. From rising sea levels, threatening our coastal communities, to extreme weather events disrupting our sexual economies, we must quickly mitigate this phenomena by transitioning to low carbon energy sources. Make no mistake, as this is not just an environmental imperative, but an economic and social disruption that degrades our quality of life. Within the context of our shared geography and interconnected economies, it is vital for us to be mindful that every action by our respective country can significantly impact us as neighbours. Hence, the need for regional corporations, especially in the area of energy transition, to effectively mitigate and adapt to the impact of climate change in, more, in a more inclusive and just manner becomes crucial. Ladies and gentlemen, under the auspicious of the ASEAN Minister of Energy meeting, Malaysia is happy to see countries within our region embarking on the right path on regional cooperation. One such initiative is ASEAN Plan of Action for Energy Cooperation, better known as APIA, which is region's guiding framework for energy collaboration and cooperation. This comprehensive plan, which emphasizes enhancing energy security, Accessibility, affordability and sustainability also includes initiatives that leverages the collective strengths of member states by sharing best practices and pooling our resources, APIA can play a crucial role in driving and accelerating the region's transition to a low carbon energy system. Building on decreasing demand for renewable energy within the region Malaysia recognizes that initiative aimed at integrating our energy systems and advancing the use of renewable and low carbon energy sources such as the ASEAN Power Grid and Trans-ASEAN Gas Pipeline will be prominent drivers for a collective energy future. 
These initiatives not only facilitate the seamless exchange of energy across borders, but also enhance regional energy security and resilience. By prioritizing these collaborative efforts, we can significantly accelerate the adoption of clean energy. The FOM Malaysia firmly believe the ASEAN family as a strong economic bloc must not only sustain, but significantly strengthen our regional cooperation in operationalizing RPR from 2026 to 2030. As this incoming chair, as the incoming chair of ASEAN in 2025, Malaysia is committed to prioritizing the acceleration of clean energy transition. We will focus on deepening regional cooperation, enhancing collaboration, and fostering greater connectivity across our energy systems. By doing so, we can collectively drive meaningful progress towards a sustainable and resilient energy future for all ASEAN member states. So, ladies and gentlemen, Malaysia is fully committed to a collaborative approach in addressing the challenges of climate change and energy transition. We are committed to reduce our carbon footprint, enhancing energy efficiency, and promoting renewable energy to build a cleaner and greener industry. These efforts align with the broader regional expression of advancing a sustainable energy transition across Southeast Asia. To this end, we have set ambitious targets to achieve a renewable energy capacity mix of at least 70% in our power generation system, a significant leap from the current 27%. This commitment aligns with the 2050 outlooks of both the International Energy Agency, or IEA, and the International Renewable Energy Agency, ARENA, which emphasize that electrification is key to decarbonizing economies. A sector such as transportation, Industry and manufacturing increasingly rely on electric power. The need for clean energy becomes more critical than ever, than ever before. So, ladies and gentlemen, to realize our energy transition ambitions, Malaysia will continue to enhance the deployment of renewable energy, leveraging our natural resources, strategic location and technological advancement. This commitment is not only crucial for our national goals, but also in supporting the broader energy transition efforts in the Southeast Asia region. Key areas of focus include solar energy as a cornerstone of our renewable energy strategy due to our higher irradiance, government initiatives such as the Large Scale Solar Program, or LSS, Net Energy Metering Scheme, NEM, Corporate Green Power Program, and corporate renewable energy supply scheme are driving the adoption of solar technology from large-scale solar farms to rooftop installations. Hydropower remains a pivotal component of our renewable energy mix, especially in East Malaysia. While in West Malaysia, mini hydro projects are being developed in rural areas, harnessing local resources to provide clean electricity and stimulate local economies. Biogas and biomass. As one of the world's largest palm oil producers, Malaysia generates substantial biomass that can be converted into energy. Investing in biomass and biogas technologies will help reduce waste, lower emissions, and contribute to a circular economy, thereby diversifying our renewable energy portfolio beyond solar. So, ladies and gentlemen, the urgency of the climate crisis demands a united global and regional response. The evidence is indisputable, and we must accelerate our transition to clean energy, which Malaysia is fully committed in playing its part in this critical endeavor. In conclusion, I want to reiterate that achieving net zero is not a mission, and one nation can, ac can accomplish alone. And but, what that, but one that requires our collective efforts from all nations, sharing best practices, harnessing innovative technologies, and ensuring a just transition that benefits everyone at all levels. By working together, we can build a future powered by clean energy, 
securing a sustainable and prosperous future for generations to come. So let me end by extending my heartfelt gratitude to our host for the warm hospitality and organizing this crucial event. Thank you.